I bought myself a Fingerbot to um, enable me to switch on and switch off my dehumidifier. Um, it's a pretty straightforward device, but the problem that I've got is um, my air conditioning unit is one of these buttons where you can you need to touch it with a human finger to turn it on and off again. It's a con capacitive button. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I've got this device set up to work with that capacitive button and how I integrate it into Home Assistant. So if that's something of use, then stick around and watch the video. Thanks for watching. Hi, my name's Paul from Project Smart Home. So as I said in the intro, I'm going to be setting up one of these finger bots today to work with my dehumidifier air conditioner unit thing. Um, when I bought the finger bot, it's got like a mechanical uh, function built into it. So when you press the button, it um, activates and it'll push the button, the physical button on your device. On my air conditioning unit, it's a capacitive button rather than resistive, which means that it needs a finger to, to turn the thing on and off. So after doing lots of research to understand how these things work, I have come up with a solution to, to that using, believe it or not, a screw and a piece of wire attached to the finger box. So I'll go into some detail about how that works in a minute and I'll put a description below on the difference between capacitive and resistive buttons just so you understand what they are. Um, so in the video, I'll take you through how I've set the Fingerbot up, integration into Home Assistant, the automation that I'm using to turn the unit on and off, and um, hopefully that'll put you in a position where you can set up one of these things yourself. Thanks for watching. So this is my portable air conditioning slash dehumidifier. So at the moment, I when I get notified that the humidity is high, I need to turn this on and off automatically, um, manually, sorry. So I wanted a way to be able to turn this on automatically. So as soon as the humidity is being detected as high, then this dehumidifier switches on. So I bought one of these finger bots. And the reason I bought the finger bot is because it's got um, Zigbee built into it, so I can integrate it into Home Assistant more easily rather than the Bluetooth version uh, versions that are out there. So there's, there's not an awful lot to it. Um, obviously, before you, need to, before you can integrate it, you need to um, pull that little tab out of the back so the battery's activated. You can just about see a button on top of the robot that activates the up and down button. And this is me testing it with the battery in and nothing happens, um, which was pretty disappointing at this point. So I needed to find a solution to try and get this working with the buttons there. So after doing some reading, I've, I found out that people had used screws and nails and bits of wire. So I'm just doing some testing now just to see what works. But notice I'm not using my finger, because if I use my finger and I touch it, then I become the um, part of the kind of solution for this. So a screw on its own didn't work. A screw with about an inch long piece of copper wire didn't work. But an in a screw with about a three inch piece of wire does work, work. And you can see the dehumidifier is activated and turned off there. So I now know that I can find, come up with a way to attach that screw and wire to the finger bot and the solution should work. And so this is the solution working. Um, with a piece of wire attached to a screw head. Um, so essentially what I did was I took the screw um, and just chopped the thread piece off and then glued essentially the copper wire to the, screw, the remaining bit of the screw and then glued that to the bottom part of the finger bot and that seems to be working okay. You need, probably need to experiment a little bit with the length of the copper wire, but I've probably got, what, three or four, five inches of copper wire there, but depending on your machine, it might operate in a different way. So now we've got that up and working, we can add the Fingerbot to Home Assistant. So as you can see here, I'm using Zigbee 2MQTT, so you would need to have 
this up and running or whatever Zigbee solution you're using in your Home Assistant installation. So the device has been automatically detected. Um, so what I'm going to do is rename it to something a bit more sensible so I can find it when I'm creating my automations. What I tend to do is name it according to where the thing is, the item is, the device is. So in this case, I've got my um, dehumidifier in the um, entrance reception area to our house. So I'm just going to rename it to that and then update all of the entities as well, just so I can find those. So now that's in place, I can um, use the created device in my automation. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll take you to that next. So before I look at the automation and how I've set that up, uh, we'll have a little bit of a look at what settings are exposed on the dehumidifier that I've just added. So on the finger bot, it's, as I say, I've got it in Zigbee to MQTT. So if I have a look at the device, um, we've got on off state, the battery position and the different modes, all these settings are available. And what I'll do is in the link in the description below, I'll put a link to the MQTT device configuration so you can understand what all these mean. So in Home Assistant itself, the device has come through as Reception Dehumidifier, as I renamed it earlier. And again, I can switch it on and off with the toggle switch. And you can configure the different settings as well within the Home Assistant interface. Okay, so let's have a look at the automation. So um, this is the automation that I've created for the Fingerbot. Um, previously, I was just using this as a notification method. So if the humidity got above 65% uh, anywhere in the house, it would notify me, but um, I would then have to go to the dehumidifier and turn it on manually, and hopefully it would sort out the problem. So I've updated the um, automation now, so it still detects humidity. <clears throat> so I've got various humidity sen sensors around the house and I actually live in a bungalow and I've got the dehumidifier in the hallway, uh, which is in the middle of the house. So if the humidity rises either there or any of the rooms around it, then hopefully this humidifier or dehumidifier will... Um, sort out the problem. So if high humidity above 65% is detected in any of these rooms, then using this trigger ID high underscore humidity underscore detected, then it's going to do, it's going to choose one of the options. And in this case, option one, because that matches the trigger ID. And I don't want it going off overnight because it's really, really loud. Um, so I'm only going to run it between 10 a.m. and 9 p.m. So if the humidity goes above 65% during those times, this should kick in until that humidity is brought back down. I get a notification on my mobile phone saying that a particular room um, has triggered the... Um, high humidity and the dehumidifier should be going off and again I get a message on my um, Amazon device as well and the dehumidifier is is turned on so obviously we don't want it running 24 7 <clears throat> so the other side of that is again same rooms dehumidifier in the middle of the house so if the reception, hallway, or any of these rooms drops below 52% humidity, then it will trigger this ID, which is low humidity detected, which will take us down to option two. 
and again confirm this between 10 and uh, 10 in the morning and 9 in the evening and turn the dehumidifier off or the finger bot off so it should work and this has been in place for a few days now so it seems to be working just fine um, I won't go through actually how I've built that but if you do want the YAML code let me know and I'll put it on um, I'll put a link to it on the in the description but hopefully that was useful thanks for watching the video all the way to the end I hope you found it useful uh, if you did find it useful then please considering liking and subscribing that would help me out and help the channel out and motivate me to do some more videos um, if you have found a different solution to this I'd love to hear it uh, although it works, it is a little bit annoying having a, a bit of metal screw head and cable dangling off the, the robot. Um, so yeah, if you've got any feedback on that, that would be much appreciated. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.